Hello and welcome back to Manifolds. And as always, first I really want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. Now, in today's part 7, we will talk about continuous maps. Indeed, continuity is a core concept in the field of topology. However, you might already have seen continuous functions in other courses. For example, the epsilon delta definition of continuity occurs in real analysis. There, a graph of a function might look like this. And now this function is called continuous at the point x. If, when you go to the y-axis, you can take any epsilon neighborhood of f of x, and then the pre-image of this contains a delta neighborhood of x. So this is the epsilon delta definition of continuity you should know from analysis. Also there you learn that there is a second definition with sequences. This one is also not so complicated, you just fix an x on the x-axis again. And then you just look at any sequences that converge to this x. However, now this implies that we get also on the y-axis a sequence given by the images of this sequence. And now if this sequence also converges to the limit f of x, to the image of x, then we say that the function is continuous at the point x. Okay, so you see, when we work with functions from r to r, we have two equivalent definitions for continuity. And indeed, they also work in general metric spaces. However, in our topological spaces now, we would like to have a definition, a general definition, that only works with open sets. And indeed, the epsilon delta definition can give us an idea, because we have open sets here on the x-axis and open sets on the y-axis. More precisely, what we want is that for any open set we can choose on the y-axis, we find that the corresponding pre-image is also open. And please note, to denote the pre-image I use brackets. Now also important to see here is that this general definition here gives us immediately that the function f is continuous at all points x on the x-axis. Of course also a pointwise definition could be generalized by just using neighborhoods, but we don't need it for the moment. Therefore I would say let's define continuity in this general way. Now the pictures from above with the graphs are not suitable anymore because we have two abstract topological spaces. And there let's call the first one x tx. So we have a set x together with a topology tx. And the second one should be a set y together with a topology ty. For this reason the best visualization would be that we have a set x on the left hand side and a set y on the right hand side. And then we simply have a map f from left to right from x to y. However here please don't forget we have more structure on the left hand side as well as on the right hand side. For example we don't just have the set x here but also the topology tx which gives meaning to neighborhoods of points. And now when we want that the map f conserves this structure, we reach the term continuity. So visually speaking, this means here on the left hand side, when we have points that are close, then the map f should map them to points that are also close. However, in general, we don't have a metric to measure this closeness. Therefore, we immediately take the open sets. And therefore we do this, as I already told you, by taking any open set u on the right hand side. And then we go to the left hand side to the pre-image. And if this pre-image is also an open set, we call the map continuous. So formally we would write for all u in the topology ty, we get that the pre-image f to the power minus 1 of u is in tx. So I think this is very easy to remember. Continuous means pre-images of open sets are always open sets. Okay, I think in addition I should also tell you about another important notion in topology. And this is a so-called homeomorphism. 
And this simply tells us that the structure of the topological space is conserved in both directions. More concretely, this means first the map F should be a bijective map, and second also a continuous map by this definition, and most importantly we also have the third property that the inverse is also a continuous map. Of course, don't forget, F inverse goes from Y into X. Okay, then I would say, let's look at some simple examples of such continuous maps. They are simple, but they are also important to know. The first one comes in when we take the indiscrete topology on Y. Please recall, this means only the empty set and the full space Y are open sets. However, this means there are only two sets to check for this implication here. Or in other words, it does not matter which topology Tx for x we choose, because the only possible pre-images are the empty set and the full space. Therefore, this here is always fulfilled. Hence then, every map f from x to y is continuous then. So you see, this is a nice example, because it immediately gives us a lot of continuous maps. Now, on the other hand, the other extremum would be that x is the discrete topological space. Here, please also recall, this means that all subsets of x are open sets. So Tx is simply the power set of x. Therefore, you also immediately see it's no problem at all to fulfill this implication. So no matter which topology we choose on y, we always get continuous maps. Okay, then the last example I want to show you is also one we've already discussed. There we just take any topological space x t x and an equivalence relation tilde. Hence the topological space y should be given by the quotient topology. So you already know we can form a new topological space and we simply call it the quotient space. Moreover, we have found that we have the so-called canonical projection. Indeed, this one we simply called Q and it maps X to the equivalence class of X. And now by the definition of the quotient topology, we know Q is a continuous map. In other words, the quotient space is defined in such a way that the canonical projection is continuous. Okay, there we have some general examples, but before we continue, we should go one step back and recall the introduction. There, we also discussed continuity by using sequences. And indeed, this leads to a second continuity definition. So even if we take abstract topological spaces X and Y, we know that the notions of a sequence and a limit make sense. Therefore, we can do the same as in metric spaces or as in R and define the term sequentially continuous. And also this definition we can immediately formulate globally, so we take all points x in x. And then we just look at any sequence that converges to this point x. So let's call the sequence xn and it should converge to x when n goes to infinity. Now if we take the visualization from above, the sequence xn now lives here on the left hand side. And by using the map f, we can map it to the right hand side. Okay, and there we know, we want that the sequence on the right hand side is also convergent. So we know, this should be the sequence of the images f of xn. And they live in the set y. So it should be convergent and the limit of f of xn should be the point fx. So the image of the original point x. Okay, so this is sequentially continuous formulating a continuity property by using sequences. This makes sense when you want to calculate with a function, because this property here means you can pull the limit inside the function. However, in general topological spaces, it turns out that this is not equivalent to the definition from above. So we have the fact that in general we have two continuity definitions. On the one hand, the map f could be a continuous map, and on the other hand, f could be a sequentially continuous map. However, the good thing is now, being continuous is the stronger property, so we have this implication. 
So this holds no matter which topological space is x and y we consider here. However, we already know that we have the equivalence for special cases. For example, when you have watched my functional analysis course, you know this equivalence holds in metric spaces. Indeed, one can show this equivalence holds in all so-called first countable spaces. However, we didn't discuss them, but we discussed the second countable spaces. And because they form a subset of the first countable spaces, we also have the equivalence for the second countable spaces. And this will be the important thing when we discuss manifolds later. Okay, maybe that's good enough for the continuity today. Let's talk about compactness in the next video. Therefore, I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.